My first memories of Olive was when, as I said, when I was a little girl at seven years old, my family moved to Pensacola. My parents were not, my dad was not a Christian, but my aunt and uncle were very faithful members of Olive, so they took my brother and me with them to church. And one of my first memories of Sunday school, I can remember being so enthralled with the flannel board when they would tell the Bible story and the teacher would put all the Bible characters on there and I remember that. And I remember when we started talking about building another building, we had outgrown that building. Even they wanted the children to feel that they were a part of it, the building and contributing to it. And so somebody built a little wooden church and during the service, we would all march up to the front. We would take our dimes, nickels, quarters, whatever, and put in the little church. So we were helping to build the new church also. And so I remember the construction of what became the white building. And it was through the building of that church that my dad was saved. He was not a Christian, as I said, but my uncle was. And the men of the church, for the most part, did all the construction on it. It was a white block building. And they would come up on Saturdays and work all day. And the women of the church would bring their dinner, as we called it then. In the middle of the day, they would bring a meal and feed the workers. And it was through the building of that that my dad became under conviction and was saved. And I remember when we went into that building in the first service, he could hardly wait to walk the aisles and the safe, which completely changed the dynamic of my family. And as my mother and daddy and my brother Pete, Pete Harris, some of you know him. And so that was real special to us. And then we were in that building for a while. Brother Allen was the pastor when we built that. And after he left, Brother Howe came, and he was there a short while. Don't remember a lot about him, but I do remember vividly when Brother Jeff came, Brother Russo. And I was 15 the first Sunday that he was there, and it was snowing that day. It was in January, which made quite a stir and excitement because it was snowing. But as I said, I may or may not have not been paying a whole lot of attention that day because there was a good-looking young Marine that was home on leave by the name of Clyde Perizine. And he might have caught my eye. Of course, he didn't know I was alive. I was only 15. He was 19. He was an older man. But unbeknownst to me, later, three years later, when he came home, we started dating, and we were married in that building. So that's where our married life started, where we were when our children were born. So that, that place meant a lot to us. And I remember one time in, one, in my teenage years, as we were running out of space, it seems like we were always running out of space and having to find places to meet. Uh, my Sunday school class actually met in a church bus. Miss Trudy Owen was my Sunday school teacher, and I was probably in high school at that time. And that's where we met in Sunday school. And the nursery was in the garage of the pastorium, which was next door to the church. And then when they moved out, they uh, took that building and made a whole nursery out of it, preschool and nursery. And so, as I said, it seems like we were always in some kind of a building program. And the church expanded a lot under Brother, Brother Rousseau. And of course, then, then we built the next building, which became known as Russo Hall because he, he did so much there. And his wife, Miss Preacher, as we called her, she was so instrumental in a lot of our lives. She was um, the Sunday school for the young married ladies. And uh, she meant a lot to, to a lot of us growing up during that time. And then I remember, we've got a lot of memories there, but then I remember when Brother Jerry came. Uh, our children were the same age as his children. and. Uh, so we had a lot in common with them, and uh, we quickly, uh, you know, outgrew that building. But one thing that Brother Jerry did when he first came, he made a promise that he was going to visit everybody, every church member, go into their home for a visit. And to my knowledge, he did that. And of course, this was in the 70s, and a lot of these streets were not paved. There was no GPS, so I don't know how he found some of them, but he did. 
And then another thing that he did that was real special, he called every member on their birthday. So you would spend all day long, if you didn't hear from him in the morning, you just kept waiting for that phone call because you knew Brother Jerry was gonna call you. And uh, that, was, that was something that was special to us. And I remember the first really big building program that we had, Together We Build was the building program, the first one that we actually took pledges for. Up until that time, we would sell bonds. So it was a complete faith thing then that we could raise that amount of money because we were bursting at the seams. After Brother Jerry came uh, with his evangelism emphasis, and the church just exploded and we quickly ran out of space. And so we had built the auditorium that we were in, but we needed additional space to, to, for educational space. And so and the title of that one was, for, was Together We Build because we came together as a church making pledges. And we had, of course, a lot of prayer meetings leading up to that. And then uh, just trusting that God would, you know, carry us through and that we would reach that goal. But the men actually constructed, for the most part, that church, that building. Of course, the building is not the church. We know that, the church of the people. And that, I think that's the thing that we forget so many times, the people of Olive from back like when I was a little girl. And these were hard working, manual labor men. Because Ferry Pass, you gotta understand, at that time, we were in the country. I mean, there was farming and outhouses still, and this was the country. Dirt roads, Olive was a dirt road. And uh, even when Clyde and I married in 1957, East Olive was still a dirt road then. The other side of Olive where the church was, I, I think it was paved by then but East Olive was still dirt roads. So, and that was in 1957. So it, it was just, and of course there was no, there was all pasture land, farms, and just hardworking, uh, manual labor type people that lived out here. And, and uh, there weren't that many people, but as, you know, things grow, as the people moved out to this area, that's when the building, the actual buildings started taking place. And it seemed like we would get into one building and it was soon full and we'd have to start another building project. So, um, but it was the people, the hard work that they, that they did themselves. And the women helped too, because they would cook the food and would bring it up there for them to eat so that they would have a good lunch and they would eat and then go back to work and work till dark, till, you know. It, was, it took a while. I don't remember how long, but I could, it seemed like it went on forever before the building was actually finished. Training Union, the first class we taught was Training Union. And Susan and Huey Pearson, Susan Pearson and Huey were in our class. And I remember that, and I think they remember that because we've talked about it, you know, through the years. Oh, but through the years, of course, music was a big part of our life. I started singing in the choir at 15, and Clyde was a teenager when he you know, came back from the service and we were in the choir and that was probably our heart. But of course Clyde was a deacon, Sunday school teacher. I taught Sunday school, worked in the nursery. I don't think there's a position up there that at some time he or I was not involved in. And, uh, but choir was probably, was our main love. And during the time between Brother Howe and Brother, Out and, uh, Brother Russo, Clyde was the interim music director because uh, we didn't have a music director at the time. Connection groups as they're called now, we called it Sunday School all those years, but uh, they are so important. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, as a lot of the people know, Clyde had a very difficult last few years. Of course, we had been involved in Sunday School all our lives, teaching and being members of. They stepped forward, they were with us, they prayed with us, they brought food, anything we needed. They were there and I knew that, that they were and that I could call any of them at any time and they would be right there with us. Another interesting thing, when Brother Passmore was here, uh, there had never been a couples class at Olive. And of course, Brother Passmore was very innovative in a lot of things. And he approached Clyde one day and asked him what did he think about teaching a couples class because before that 
the women would go in one class and the men would go in, go in another one. And there were a lot of young couples that one of the spouses wouldn't attend because they did, couldn't be with their spouse and they didn't know people. So we actually, Clyde taught and I was the secretary and helped in there and had the first uh, couples class. And, for, and it was for young married couples. And it grew and grew and grew. And of course, now there are couples classes for all ages, but that was quite new and different. Then and that was done when Brother Passmore started that. And so we've been in Sunday school and our children were raised, that's another important thing. Our children were raised there and had awesome Sunday school teachers and programs for them. And that's another thing that, that, that Olive has been so great at through the years is teaching our young people, our children and our young people. And uh, my, my, both my kids were married there and the grandchildren were raised there and baptized there, and both the grandsons have gone into ministry. And they, so they had a lot of good teachers and leaders through the years that influenced, influenced their lives. Get involved, that's the main thing. You can't just go on Sunday morning and be there for the worship service. That's great and it's wonderful, and Brother Ted is an awesome pastor and preacher and sticks to the Word, which that's one thing Olive pastors have always done in my lifetime. They've been Bible believers and taught the Bible, and so we've been under great leadership. The three that, that were most influential in my life, Russo, Pastor Moore, and Brother Ted. But you can't just do that. You've got to be involved. Bring those, don't send those children to Sunday school with an aunt and an uncle or a neighbor. Bring those chill, children and get them started. At, my, I, Vicki and Brandy both, the first Sunday in Sunday school, they were two weeks old. And so they were in church from the time they were before, before they were born. And we always came with them and that's so important, get involved. And, and most of the connection groups or Sunday schools now, they have ongoing projects where they help people and you're out into the community. You're not just sitting on the corner of Olive and Davis on Sunday morning hearing an awesome message. You're in the community, you're doing things. And the Ministry Village, all that that has transpired in the last few years that have impacted our whole city in ways that we will never know. And uh, so I just encourage people to get involved and get involved. And, Clyde and I were married there in 57. He passed in 2017. We were married for 60 years, but our life was on the Baptist Church. And, it's, and as I said before, it's not the building, it's the people.